So my name is Matthew Anderson, and I am 28 years old. Great. And what are you doing to uh, to help the world? What is your story? How how did you get um, from wherever you started to where you are now? Just tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, that's that's a good question. I um I was raised in a conservative evangelical household, which shapes a lot of my experience as um, it shapes that the, the household that we're raised in shapes everyone's experience. Um, it wasn't a particularly uh, intellectually oriented household, though my parents did push me to uh, excel. Uh, but I basically spent the first 18 years of my life doing what was expected of me and uh, generally coasting, um, getting by on uh, my moderately good looks more than anything else. Um, I didn't uh, work particularly hard and I didn't find out um, what my niche was or what my passion was until uh, much later. So in one sense, I, I am a bit of a, a late bloomer. Um, when I hit college, um, I realized that um, I had several different paths before me, but that I was very interested in um, this funny thing that we call evangelicalism that I'd grown up in um, and that had shaped my experience so much. Um, I was very intrigued to understand that better and um, to understand some of the dynamics that had been at work in the movement historically. Um, so I really did a lot of exploration uh, in terms of my own theology and my own understanding of the world. Um, and it just so happened that as I was doing that, um, the whole world got interested in these weird creatures called evangelicals. Um, and uh, specifically, um, our political beliefs and our political positions. Um, I've always been uh, moderately interested in politics, and but when I hit college, that, that moderate interest um, turned into a full-blown fascination with the political world as well. Um, so uh, basically, the, to make the longer uh, story very, very short, um, I ended up sort of sitting at the nexus of two different worlds. On the one hand, uh, I was involved in this political conversation about um, conservative political ideas. On the other hand, I was involved in this conversation about what evangelicalism is, what its future is, if it has a future, um, how young people are um, reacting to evangelicalism and how we're trying to embrace it or leave it. Um, and those two worlds uh, really defined, I basically found my niche standing in those two worlds. Um, so in one sense, I'm, I'm trying to uh, help the world understand what is a pretty large demographic, um, namely conservative evangelicals. But I'm also uh, really trying to articulate a conservative evangelicalism that doesn't um, necessarily, that isn't shrill, I'll put it that way, um, that isn't harsh or um, ill-tempered, but is uh, thoughtful, um, somewhat uh, winsome and cheerful about things, and uh, uh, is... Um, really interested in articulating its positions confidently, but um, without necessarily unduly offending uh, those whom we disagree with. Great, great. Um, and you know, at, at search, you know, this idea we're working, we're dealing with working across traditional boundaries. Um, are there uh, some ways that you've worked across traditional boundaries in what you're doing? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's funny because, you know, I wrote a big article called uh, The New Evangelical Scandal, and uh, it generated a lot of attention. And I basically found myself um, at the nexus of a lot of younger evangelicals, many of whom uh, I disagree with on significant issues, um, 
but who I've been able to build relationships with and, and maintain respect with. They're all within my peer group, generally speaking, but they are people who I have very deep and substantial intellectual disagreements with. I mean, there are people on the farthest left of uh, the political spectrum, like many young evangelicals are. Um, and I, uh, I mean, I've been able to really maintain good working relationships and, and interesting conversations with them, um, which has been a lot of fun. I only in the past, the past, um, well, and, and that's that's also taken shape in, in a lot of other ways as well. Um, as I've been, um, as I've tried to articulate this uh, conservative evangelicalism that is sane, um, I have a lot of uh, readers and uh, interlocutors online um, who are not evangelical, who are interested in the relationship between uh, politics and religion, um, who are mostly libertarians. I don't, I don't have a lot of um, just outright sort of secular leftist readers, but I have, I have a, a couple of, uh, for instance, um, gay libertarians who I interact with pretty routinely um, and who I, I, just, I think the world of, I mean, super sharp guys. Um, and uh, they'll push me on stuff, I'll push them on stuff, and we, we have a good time. Was there a, you know, I know you talked about your experience in college affecting, um, you know, what you did later in life. Was there a moment um, that inspired you to take action that you knew that this is what you were going to do, or was it more of a gradual realization? It's been a very gradual realization. Um, I, like I said, you know, I am a late bloomer. Um, some young people, and I think the world of them, really are sort of, passionate from the get-go and, and um, know what they want to do. They go out and do it. Um, it took me a lot of exploration, a lot of trial and error to figure out what I was good at, um, what I was really, really passionate about, um, and, uh, um, yeah, just what I wanted to do in this world. The... Um, like I, like I said, you know, it's only been in the last year and a half, for instance, that I've aggressively pursued um, this sort of opportunity um, and, and taken this responsibility seriously. Um, prior to that, I had taught um, high schoolers for a couple of years. You know, I worked in finance for a couple of years. I worked in a nonprofit for a couple of years. I really just wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I did um, whatever could put my wife through grad school, basically. Um, while I was trying to figure out uh, where I was headed. So there wasn't a defining moment. It was definitely a, a very gradual, very slow process for me. Cool. What are some of the uh, challenges that you see facing young people today? Whew. I think the, I mean, the economic challenges are very real. Um, in fact, you know, there's been lots about how um, – about the unemployment rate uh, that we have currently. I mean, for young people, the unemployment rate is considerably higher. And um, I honestly think that's not going to change. The, the, the employment is going to be a big issue um, for both college-educated and not college-educated um, young people going forward. I mean, getting education is going to be, because of the, the sort of broader economic factors at work, um, the, the availability and the quality of education, the availability of quality education, um, I am worried about long term uh, for people, um, for people other than the, the, the sort of really um, elite uh, upper class uh, people who will always have access to education. Um, I think that is going to be uh, a really, really significant issue for young people long term, and I think you know there's there's lots of stories about um, twenty somethings failure to launch um, <laughs> that that whole phenomenon. The the world of young people really does seem to be split 
into. You have a lot of very aggressive young people who are out, who are really motivated, who are really involved. On the other ha hand, you have um, a lot of young people who do seem to be more lethargic, um, more just content to um, stay at home and not necessarily quite as aggressive as uh, the peers are, their peers are. And I think that their numbers, I'm worried that their numbers are growing and um, I'm just worried about uh, some of the effects on, of technology on, um, on the younger generations going forward. Yeah, definitely. And, and following up, what advice would you have for uh, a young person who wants to get involved? I, mean, I know you said that you, know, you didn't get involved at a later age, but what would you tell someone who wants to get involved in their community or their political process or, or whatever? Yeah, you know, the, the best advice that I, that I got um, was my junior year of college. Uh, a friend of mine told me that the really cool people get involved. Um, you know, the really cool people are out there doing things. How you get there, I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. It's one, I, I think it's Anne Lamott who has a book for writers that's called Bird by Bird. Um, and it's the story of a project that I think she had um, to, uh, where she had to research all these birds. And she was sort of overwhelmed by it. And her dad came and said, Anne, bird by bird, you start with one small thing, you do it, you get it done and then you go on to the next small thing. Um, and that would be some of my advice. You don't have to build a huge organization. You can find one small thing, do it excellently, and then go on to a second small thing and do it excellently, and then a third small thing, and just go brick by brick um, to build what it is that you want to do. Because um, you may not know what the big overarching theme is for your life. But if you just do lots of little things, um, that will eventually become clear. The other thing I'd say is, man, unplug. You know, in my own life, um, this is me preaching to myself right now, but I, I think our uh, addiction to information and um, entertainment online and through our cell phones is going to be um, debilitating long term. Um, and I think the people who really change the world will be the people who um, actually unplug and give themselves space away from the noise that comes with, uh, with technology and the Internet. Those would be the two things. <laughs> 